I'm Kathleen Kelly, and I was just interviewed by the amazing Keith Andrew. I highly recommend that you catch my episode and all the others that he is doing right now, because here is a man who is pursuing his dream, his passion, and is a great lesson for everyone out there who wants to do the same. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching the Keith Andrew Network. This is episode 636. If I was right, 636. I'm your host, Keith Andrew, along here with Kathleen Calais. I just want to say thank you for being a guest on my talk show. My pleasure, Keith. Thank you so much for asking. No, the honor's all mine. For people who want to know what my talk show's about, the whole point of my talk show is to show people that even with having a word and disability, I can still amount to something, and at the same time, I'm able to turn myself into an example for people out there dealing with any types of learning disabilities and disabilities to never give up and prove people wrong. Prove to them that labels do not dictate who you are and who you're going to be. It's to prove to them to still amount to something. Hashtag break the labels. Don't mind my dog barking in the background. She likes ruining everything. <laughs> but <laughs> it's a half hour, 30 minutes every time. Say anything you want. Talk about anything you want. PG, PG-13. So I have nothing up my sleeve. So you can ask me. I ask you. And the first question I want to ask you is actually, how was life growing up? How was life? Wow. That's fascinating, Keith, because I'm actually working on my memoirs right now. Um, and, and I was, um, I'd like to say that my parents had three only children because I'm the oldest, I'm adopted, my brother is adopted, and then my sister is their natural child, their blood child. So... Um, it's, it was interesting. My dad was with the New York Police Department for a number of years. My mom was a registered nurse. They were phenomenal parents. Um, we each had, each of the children had their own, um, thing, I guess you could say. Um, I was considered, uh, the gifted child and creative and, you know, imagination out for days. Uh, my brother was a handful. Uh, one of the first kids that was put on Ritalin when that was being prescribed. And then my sister was born severely hard of hearing. So she also is a person with disabilities. And so I grew up in a household um, that dealt with all three of our special needs. And I'm very grateful for that. So you know firsthand what it's like to deal with someone or with a group of people with special needs. Because you have Absolutely. had that experience. Yes. Yes. And as I've gone on to teach uh, at my studio, ATC Studios, which is a nonprofit performing arts conservatory, we also, uh, on occasion, will have special students in the class. And it has been my absolute pleasure to work with them because I find that um, these people, sometimes kids, sometimes adults, bring a unique perspective to everything and are great assets to my classes. Hey, if that's a possibility, I would love to work with you. Cool. Come on out. We're in New Jersey. <laughs> oh, what part? <laughs> you'd, have, you'd have to cross the Hudson. Um, we are located in Clifton, New Jersey, which is about 12 miles from Midtown Manhattan. All right, so I'm I'm on the border where Greenwood Lake is, but I always oh, hear. Oh, that's uh, very close. 
I, I really don't know if that's north or south or whatever Greenwood Lake falls under. We are north, uh, well, you are north of, of us. And I would say in decent traffic, uh, about a half hour or so. That's not so bad. And I know there's a couple, do uh, like a little pug, but <laughs> but there's a couple of wrestling schools, you know, where there's near um, Patterson, New Jersey, Mawa, New Jersey. Uh, and Absolutely. East Coast Pro Wrestling and the Monster Factory. I would so love, do you wrestle? I would like to, but I wear glasses. But I want to be an announcer. But the problem okay. is, it's two hours away, and I don't have that type of money. Well, I have the money if I save up, but it's kind of hard because, okay, I'll give you an example. I come down to your place. Oh, it's really great. When's the next time you got to be here? A month or so? So there's this like open window saying, yes, I can be there for a day, but then it's going to be a long span. Okay, I'm oh, here. Long span. I'm here. Long span. I'm here. Long span. You see, it's yeah. not, it wouldn't be beneficial for both parties because it's not a continuous thing. Right. No, we definitely have classes that go on a schedule. Yeah. For instance, I'm starting an intro to acting class this evening which is one of the reasons why I have to scoot out of here at a specific time. Um, so, it, and that, that class, for instance, goes for six sessions on Wednesday nights. So, yeah, we would have to have, if you were going to become a student, we would need a commitment for whatever that semester was. You know, whether it's six weeks or ten weeks or twelve weeks, whatever. Yeah. Hey, if you let me sweep at the, the studio, I, I pay you rent. <laughs> Are you really that far away? Two hours? Um, an hour and a half, two hours max. Depends on traffic and all that. I will double check for you afterwards. But, yeah, you say you're just north of, you're just um, over the border, Greenwood Lake. That's that's 30 minutes away from me. Right, that's not so bad. No. Well, we A lot these... of people come from um, just over the border in New York. Well, anyone like from Monroe, uh, Harriman, Central Valley, Chester, Gosen? Uh, mm, we did a while ago, I'll be very honest with you. Um, when the gas prices started going up, our circle got tighter. Right. <laughs> so, um, not as much. Harriman, um, that's where Harriman State Park is, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I go up there fairly regularly myself, so it's it's an hour tops. Yeah. Well, if anything, we can, I, I can go to Jersey, we can hang out, or you can come, um, or we can get lunch or something. We can definitely make that work. Okay. Sounds like a plan. <laughs> but the first thing I do want to plug for you is for people who want to know who you are, you are a professional actor, you work on TV and films. You are a professional writer, director, and a teaser. So you're a jack of all trades. So the first question I want to talk to you about is disabilities. Have you, you mentioned, you know, your, your brother and your sister had disabilities. Were those people, some, a group of people who influenced you to work with people with disabilities? And how does that dictate your work? That's very interesting. Um, you know, honestly, I never really thought about it in any detail. It's just who I am. So probably, I mean, that's the way I grew up. So I don't know any different. So to me, it was always, you know, even in high school, I remember I was directing a show in high school, when I was in high school. And there was a blind um, uh, student that auditioned and he did very well and I cast him and people were like well why did you do that um, because he's good at what he does he brings something to the play why wouldn't I and as the time went on they all came to see that oh yeah he's definitely um, you know an asset to the production itself and you know I, I look back fondly on that but that's always been my life uh, as I went on and I created ATC Studios with my husband, um, we started producing plays about, oh, geez, it's almost, the, 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 play, the uh, company itself is almost 30 years old. 
And we've been producing plays in our area for about 20 years. And when we can, we try to get, for instance, we try to get um, a sign language interpreter at our performances. Um, the last one I did like that was a production of Godspell, which I did last fall. And we had one of our performances um, sign language interpreted, and it was phenomenal because it presented the audience with a whole new um, dimension to the show as well. And we had already incorporated some sign language into the production because one of the actresses um, was sign language fluent. Uh, she hearing but she was sign language fluent. And so she taught the man who was playing Jesus in God's spell how to sign. So they had that between them as um, their character thing. So, I mean, obviously that was probably influenced by the fact that my sister was deaf. Um, maybe, but it's always been a cause of mine. So it's hard to separate it out, Keith. I don't know quite how to answer that question. <laughs> no, no, it's fine. Now, let me ask, what was the very first thing that you ever did, and what influenced you to become an actor? Let's we'll start, we'll just start from the very beginning. Wow. The very first thing I did was I played Mrs. Santa Claus in our kindergarten play. And that wasn't what influenced me. But... <laughs> um, in sixth grade, uh, I'm going to date myself right away here. Um, there was a very popular television show called Pine Tunnel. And I wrote an episode for it in my naivete. And I sent it out to one of the actors on the show. And we actually did the episode in my school, in my grade school. Uh, we created the time tunnel. I played one of the roles. I don't remember. If, I think the teacher ended up directing it. Not positive about that. Um, but I got response back from the actor. And she said to me, um, keep writing. We need good writers. Well, at that time, yes, I was writing, but I was also very interested in acting. And the next year, the following year, um, American Conservatory, no, American Theater Conservatory, is that right? No, American Conservatory Theater, ACT, from San Francisco, came to New York, and they did a season in New York City. Um, one of my favorite actresses, or actors, as you, as we say politically correctly, um, was, was in um, Chekhov's uh, Three Sisters, and the, um, the actor was Michael Learned. You might remember she played the mother on the Waltons. And I went backstage to see her afterwards. And she said to me, uh, if there's anything else you love to do, please go and do that. Because this is really difficult. And it was almost like a challenge. <laughs> you know. And I knew at the time that I really, really loved performance and, and acting and everything that um, everything that performing brought to me, which was basically joy and a place to fit in. And that coupled with a performance that I did actually at my church when I was 13 um, kind of made me commit to pursuing it. Much to my parents' disappointment, um, they wanted me to either become a veterinarian, which I was interested in, that was true, um, or a heart surgeon. And uh, my, my grades and everything certainly would have allowed me to pursue that if I wanted to spend my time in science classes, which I did not. Um, much too creative an individual to settle down and study 32 sciences so I could take care of animals. So now I just do it on my own time, so to speak. So, so that's basically, I mean, by the time I was 13, I had committed. I knew what I wanted to do. No, I agree with you. And for an example, this is what I want to do until the day I die. I'm very passionate about this. 
and I actually found something I want to do. I'm not saying not to be funny or cute. This is really what I want to do. Absolutely. And I, what I would say to you is then, then you have no choice. You have to pursue it. You know, I tell people that come to us at ATC every single time, say, I use the same question that Michael Learned posed to me. I say, do you love anything else? If they say yes, I say, go do that. If they say, well, yeah, I do. I like singing and I like dance. Um, I like to write. I like to draw. And I'm like, okay, so basically you're saying all of the creative stuff, right? <laughs> and they're going, yeah. And I said, all right, then you don't have a choice. You know, if there's anything else you love to do, by all means, go do it. But if this was is what makes your heart sing, then this is what you have to do. Because otherwise, you're going to come back to it again and again until you find, you finally satisfy that dream. Um, I have so many people who come to us having given it up, supposedly. They have a family, whatever it is. And then... They come back to us because they find that that dream is still there and they have to find a way of fulfilling it. No, I agree with you. Now we're going to take a quick commercial break. And when we come back, I'm going to ask you a couple more hard-hitting questions and I'll pass the show over to you. I'm Linda Collins. Hi, I'm Marissa Joy Davis. This is Michelle Wong. And I'm Nancy Rose. My name is Brandy Hunt. And Hello, my name is Raven Wynn. Hi there. My name is Giovanna Vidal. Hi. I'm Monica Thomas. Hi, I'm Paisley Blackburn. I'm Ashley Burgess. Hi, my name is Jeanette Abney. Hi, I'm Sharon Spink. Hey, this is Samantha Moore. Hi, I'm Melody Jones. Hi, my name is Becky Yee. Hi, you're watching the Keith Andrew Network. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Keith Andrew Network. You're watching the one and only Keith Andrew Network. This is episode 636. I'm your host, Keith. Along here is Kathleen the beautiful and talented Kathleen, thank you for sticking with us. Now, as we were talking about before we went to the break, I want to talk to you about social media. Can social media make you or break you? But the first thing I want to ask you about your acting career and your acting company, more importantly, is, okay, we all know you're a great professional actress, but what people don't know is that you teach a whole bunch of people, normal people, and people with disabilities. Hint, the show why I'm like an inspiration for people with disabilities. Well, I kind of hope I'm an inspiration for people with disabilities. If not, whatever. You know, they like what they like. But have you ever had any students in your class where you said, you know what, I can see great things for you, and they went off and done these wonderful things? Oh, absolutely. Um, in our first class, our original class back in 1990, Federico Castelluccio was one of my students. Federico, um, you, if you watch, watch The Sopranos, um, Federico played the hitman Furio on The Sopranos and uh, has certainly um, maintained his professional career um, well, before and since, and he's a phenomenal fine artist as well as a performing artist. Uh, he's a painter, um, extraordinary, extraordinary talent. So he was in our very first class. Um, in the most recent, oh, well, no, let me take a little bit of a, a jump. Um, Nina Arianda, who won the Tony for Venus and Fur, um, was came to us when she was five years old and she did not speak a word of English um, and she through her classes with us she was with us for about seven years I believe um, she learned um, <laughs> she not only learned English but she became um, I fondly said she was my little monster because you could not keep her down. You could not keep her off the stage. She was phenomenal. And I certainly knew at that time if she pursued it, which she obviously did, that um, she would be a force to reckon with. So Nina Arianda is, was one of ours. Most recent, and this is where I was going to jump to, most recent 
is the young lady who was cast by Steven Spielberg as Maria in West Side Story, Rachel Zegler. They just completed filming about uh, not even a month ago, I think. And um, so she's on her way to rocket into stardom. Uh, she not only was one of my students, but I also cast her and worked with her in two musicals. The first when she was 12, and she was part of the company of Fiddler on the Roof that I directed. She was one of the younger sisters. Um, and we knew that. We knew beyond a shadow of a doubt this child was special. And I spoke to her mother at that time and said, you know, you, you've got, she's got it. She's going to make it. And then, a few years later, I cast her as Millie in Thoroughly Modern Millie. And people were like, how can you do that? She's so young. She's only 16 at the time. And uh, I knew from the moment I was going to be working on that show that she would make a viable Millie. And when she came out and auditioned, there was no doubt in anyone's mind. Um, she was just amazing. And she killed it. Absolutely was phenomenal. And in the lobby following one of those performances, uh, again, I pulled her mother aside and I said, don't push her to have to go to college. She's got it now. She can do it now. That January, which was like two months later, she started to submit herself for West Side Story. She did that on her own. She self-taped and sent it to the open casting call. And in the process of a year, literally a full year of auditioning and uh, going for callbacks um, and, and meeting with Spielberg and all the whole creative staff and everything, she finally was cast. And she's had an amazing um, experience with all of that. So Rachel, Rachel Zegler, um, Nina Arianda, Federico Castelluccio, these are names that the public might be aware of. We've got tons of other people who certainly do this professionally, um, both on this coast and on the West Coast. In fact, my daughter is out on the West Coast right now doing this. So my whole family's in this. Can't, can't escape it. <laughs> <laughs> now, my other question is, what were some of your favorite films that you acted in and also the ones that you directed? Films? Yes. Well, I honestly don't direct that much film. I'm, I'm mostly a stage director. Oh, it said on your website that you are a TV and films. I, I do that as well, but not not to the extent that I do on stage. I teach TV and film and filmmaking. All right, well, we'll get, can you give us a perfect – well, what's used me for a perfect example? If I want to upgrade my quality to get more people interested, do you think I fall under the film category or do you think I fall under the TV category? Oh, TV. And how come you say that? TV. If that's what you're looking for, as as far as far as what you doing, what you, I'm seeing you do right now, yes. I would say it's TV. It's web series, basically. And what yeah. were some of your ideas? Like, do you what do you think of my work? Well, I, <laughs> I am very impressed and pleased that you are pursuing what you love, um, that you are becoming a role model, which is imperative today people need no matter who you are you need role models and I think that you are definitely providing that for a segment of the population and not just for the segment of the population you may think that you are but rather also to anyone who wants to pursue a dream and so to me that's universal it's not just an appeal to people with persons with disabilities. It's, a per it's definitely an appeal to everyone. This is how you go about, this is how you stay on track to fulfill your dream and to operate from a place of joy in your life. And life is short. If we're not doing what we love, why are we doing it? No, I agree with you. Now I'm going to pass the show over to you. But the last question I want to ask you, 
You know, a lot of actors say, you know, uh, Jackie Chan, he can't read Chinese, or he doesn't read a script. And there's a lot of actors who have disabilities, and they can't read a script. I read and learn at a fifth grade level, and I'm on the spectrum of being retarded. Now, with that being said, do you think I have what it takes to be an actor? Yes. And what makes you say yes? I don't even have to hesitate on that, Keith, because part of what makes, um, part of it is determination and drive. Um, part of it is, well, that's a lot of it, actually. It's true that part of it is talent, um, and until I, I work with you, I, I honestly wouldn't know what that is, per se, except from what I've seen now. In your niche, you are talented. Does that extend? I don't know, but we could find out. Um, so, and I also know that there's, from what I can tell at least, I mean, we have not met in person yet, but from what I can tell, there is nothing to prevent you from learning the techniques that make a, a, a solid actor. I don't see a, a learning impediment at that level. You say that the reading might come in. Yeah, we do have to read. It's true. But there are ways around that now. So I'm sure you've learned many of those tricks. <laughs> That's true. Hey, you know, uh, for an example, I have text to speech on my phone. And there you go. I didn't know how to pronounce your last name, so I type it in and it pronounces it. So after about three, four times of repeating it, it will it sinks in, and then I can say it. Exactly, and that's true for most people, not just for you. So, good for you. Now, what's the last five minutes left? I'm gonna pass it over to you. Was there anything you wanted to know? Any projects you wanted to promote? This is your time. Thank you so much. Actually, there is one in particular that we have not touched on. Um, you did mention that I'm a writer. And that is true. And I've had uh, plays produced in New York, short, um, shorter plays produced in New York. Um, I am writing right now. And I recently had one of my children's stories. Well, they, they're being marketed as a children's story. It's not, not just for children. Um, published. And I, I do want to talk about that. So um, this is my uh, book, The Grifter Mouse and the Star Dragon. And this story was one of a series of stories called the Slamto Caracas stories. He's a storyteller. And I wrote them for my husband when we were dating. So before we were married, these were all written. And after we were married and, and we had children, I took the stories into, um, actually even before that, um, we would take the stories and do like puppet things with them. And we did that in New York. Um, and then we moved out to New Jersey when we had children. And I took the stories into schools and had incredible response from the kids and the teachers. Uh, the stories themselves are all, um, they all have some sort of teaching focus. This particular one is that there are no limits to friendship. Um, neither color nor size nor distance, there's no limit. And this book is designed and was deliberately designed so that you can illustrate your own pictures for this. Because when I would take them into schools, the kids would immediately start to draw what they saw. And the teachers would send me those pictures. And I find that even when I read these stories to adults, the same thing happens. They all start doodling and coming up with these amazing characters. So in speaking with my publisher, we decided that we should not limit a um, person's imagination. Indeed, we should incorporate it and, and make it a partnership between me as the storyteller and them as the illustrators. So each, each person has their own very unique book. And um, the publisher is Balboa Press, which is a subsidiary of Hay House. And um, it, they're out now. You can get them. By the way, they're also on Amazon. <laughs> um, 
but uh, the Gupta Mouse and the Star Dragon could make a wonderful gift. And if you happen to be um, nearby uh, the, in the New Jersey area, people can contact me through KathleenKelley.com, and I'll be happy to sign the books for them. Um, I do have book signings on occasion. My next one is November 20th at uh, the, one of the Clifton Public Libraries here. Um, so I'll be doing that. I, I was at NJ Pack a couple of weeks ago, New Jersey Performing Arts Center, a couple of weeks ago at the Art Authors Expo there. Um, so that's something that I'm now delving into a little bit more. It's opening up a whole new world to me because not having been published um, on my own, I was published in anthologies before, but on my own, um, it's a very different world. And... Um, I used I used to think I was a fast learner, Keith, but when it comes to this stuff, I'm like, oh my gosh, wait a minute, what? I have to do what? <laughs> um, so that's that's something that's going on that's new right now. And of course, always um, I, I need to mention ATC Studios, uh, which can be found at atcstudios.org, and. This is um, a nonprofit performing arts conservatory that my husband and I founded when we moved out to New Jersey in 1990. And we're going strong. Um, so if people are in the area and they're looking for good, tra excellent professional training in um, acting, improvisation, voice acting, um, TV and film, as opposed to just stage, um, we're a notable place and very highly respected, not only on both sides of the Hudson, but now we're getting to have a reputation on the West Coast because we have so many people who are working out there. So, um, atcstudios.org. No, absolutely. And I do have some great ideas for you, but we're short on time. Do okay. have a question for you off the air. About wrapping up, when I first approached you to be a guest on my talk show, what was your honest opinion, and what made you say yes? Wrap it up. <laughs> why not? That was my honest opinion, and my and my honest uh, reason. But why not? You can't say no. You have to say yes in life. So that that was it. <laughs> no, I agree. Now stay tuned. I do have a question for you off the air. About okay. wrapping up, it was a real honor and privilege having you as a guest, and I'm looking forward to working with you down the road. Thanks, Keith. Me too. <laughs>